Now with the anime adaptation of Diamond is Unbreakable coming to a close, I have a lot I want to address about the ride that has been this anime adaptation. As always, David Productions has done a fantastic job at adapting this part, though not without some budget related blemishes. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is the RPG Monger, and today I want to ask the question. Was Diamond is Unbreakable really worth all of its hype? Like before, David Productions has yet again adapted the anime to a T compared to its manga counterpart, with some scenes seemingly ripped out of the manga and just given a bit of animation. Like seriously, look at this scene, I swear, they took Rohan's signature moment directly out of the manga, art and all. But I'm getting a bit sidetracked. You all want to know if Diamond is Unbreakable was truly worth the hype, right? Well here we go. Before this series started, I'm just gonna say, I was so excited to see what they do with part 4. And the main reason I was so excited is prior to this anime, Jojo really never had parts 4 and onward exposed at all, with 3 always taking the limelight compared to its counterparts, who I'm sure prior to getting an adaptation, the vast anime only audience of Jojo never even knew existed. Not to mention, Diamond is Unbreakable is now getting the same kind of exposure as Part 3 got, with its own live action movie coming out in summer 2017, which honestly could be either amazing or god awful. And on a side note, is it me or is 2017 getting a lot of live action anime slash manga movie adaptations? Like we have the Full Metal Alchemist live action, the Tokyo Ghoul live action, Ghost in the Shell, and now JoJo? I can only hope for the best, but hey, at least a good meme or two will come from it. Anyways, I got sidetracked again. Diamond is Unbreakable tells the story of Josuke Higashikata, the result of an affair between Joseph Joestar and Tomoko Higashikata, and they got his personality absolutely perfect right down to his voice actor. And on the topic of voice actors, this anime has done a fantastic job of picking the perfect people for the job of each character. Whether it be Okuyasu's gritty voice to Koichi's kind-hearted voice, each character is adapted beautifully. As always, with every Jojo part, we have gotten quality poses, and let me tell you, Diamond is Unbreakable is no exception. Not to mention, the Jojo aesthetic is only increased in this part with palette changes that fit scenes perfectly, and add that extra touch that only Jojo can deliver. One major bummer I remember having from the start of the series, and I'm sure a lot of people shared, was the change of studios who made the openings, and the lack of CG as a result of that. Though luckily we still got our catchy JoJo openings, and I'm going to be frank here, Great Days is my favorite JoJo opening without a doubt now. And you can see my full opinions about the recent developments with that opening in a video I made recently. Now onto the technical aspects of this anime. The soundtrack, as always in JoJo, has been absolutely spectacular, composed by the fantastic Yugo Kano, who also composed all of the songs for the Stardust Crusaders anime. Without him, our characters would not have nearly as much personality as they do now with themes that really enhance the show. Like honestly, when a new JoJo album comes out, I cannot stop listening to the music for weeks on end. Now I already touched on one of the good aspects of the animation this season, but now I'm going to talk about the bad aspects. With many longer running anime like Jojo, what will happen is in less important episodes, there will be a sudden dip in quality. It's normal, and that's no exception with Jojo. Many of you might say, oh, but why was Stardust Crusader's quality better than Diamond is Unbreakable? And simply put, it wasn't. Odds are, when you were watching Stardust Crusaders, you were watching the Blu-ray version. With Part 4, we've been watching it as it comes out on TV, before Blu-ray comes out and fixes the animation. So wait a few months, or maybe even less time, and rewatch some of the episodes of Diamond is Unbreakable once the TV episodes have been switched out. You'll see what I mean. As the anime that is bringing Jojo back into the limelight and attracting more and more people into the hell we call Jojo, I can surely say that Diamond is Unbreakable is for sure worth the hype, and it may be the best animated Jojo part that David Productions has made to date. Wow, alright, apparently quite a bit of you like my special brand of nonsense. Now in all seriousness, honestly, this may not seem like a lot to some of you who watch YouTubers who have hundreds and hundreds of people who watch them. But for 500 individual people to watch my little hobby that I started a few months ago, that is really touching, and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Anyways, enough of that sappy bullshit. 
Now, I'm just gonna tell you guys, these next one or two weeks are gonna be pretty JoJo-centric with part 4's anime ending, and to be honest, more than half of you are here because of my JoJo videos anyways, so enjoy the ride. If you're new to my channel and like what you see and you're still watching this video, consider subscribing if you want to. Now, the cool thing of the day is... Gintama. Gintama is a fantastic anime that I've been binge watching recently, and honestly, I'll probably make a video on it at this rate due to how much I want to say about it. But anyways, I'm the RPG monger, and don't forget that each and every one of you are fantastic. Really, you guys are.